As the governorship election in Bielsa State draws nearer and the key political actors gear up to rally the highest number of people to their cause, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has released names of gubernatorial candidates in the November 11th governorship election. At the moment, it seems it is going to be a two-horse race, race between the People's Democratic Party and the Labour Party as INEC excludes the All Progressives Congress. But in the meantime, the Bielsa chapter of Women Arise is demanding a non-violent governorship election in the state. During a peaceful march to the Bielsa Police Command, organizers also called on the INEC to conduct a transparent poll that will be acceptable to all stakeholders. Ovietime George has more. It's three weeks to the Bielsa governorship election and this group, Women Arise, joined by a coalition of women organizations embark on a peaceful march along the Melford Okili Road in Yenagoa, the state capital. Participants stopped briefly at the entrance to the Bielsa State Government House where they speak on the theme, Never Again. We want INEC to assist us, the masses, because in Bielsa State we are tired of blood spill. We are tired of wigging. We are tired of blood spill because nobody's ambition should want our blood. Please allow peace to reign. When you kill, and the people are crying. Whom are you going to rule? Whom are you going to lead? We want to appeal to their conscience to please allow peace. We want peace. We don't want war. Join aunts with our mothers. Our Bayasa women arise in order to speak in one voice against electoral violence. Because it's a slap to the Bayasa students community that our students are being used as electoral thugs during the election process. We want young people to come out and participate with their thumb prints and the ballot paper and not with guns. So we're saying no to violence. We say vote and not fight. The match terminates at the Bielsa Police Command where both parties agree to collaborate. Never again will we allow the blood of our sons to be spilled in the pursuit of power. The power of our collective resolve is far greater than the loss for political dominance. Your desire to live in a Nigeria where voices are heard, your votes are counted, and your lives are valued. Never again will our son's blood be used for election. We are going to do everything within our constitutional powers and rights to ensure that we defend the rights of every Bayelsan to go out there and cast his or her vote without harassment, molestations, and we are going to get peaceful election in Bayelsa come November 11, 2023. Political parties are expected to adhere to the rules of engagement before, during, and after the governorship polls. Ovietime George, Arise News. Okay, joining us now from Yenagua is Udengs Eradiri, Labour Party governorship candidate in Bayelsa State. Udeng, great to see you in your Labour Party outfit. So help us. Um, it looks like, uh, according to the court, uh, Timipre Silva may not be contesting, but expectation is he will proceed to the next level in terms of uh, appealing that uh, decision. And if he does, he probably has a very good chance of emerging. But let's assume that all the political parties that INEC has presented as the candidates at the moment will be the ones that will be contesting come November 11, I reckon. Where do you see yourself being able to get the winning formula? What do you need? What do you think you will need to do to get it? What is on your agenda? What are you promising the people of Bielsa well, that you think um, will win it for you? 
Kaido, good morning. Rufai and Ayo, good morning. Um, first of all, I'm experienced, I'm educated, I'm a younger person. I, I have, in various opportunities that I've uh, served, I ensured that I dealt with the issues before me without fear or favor, and I did my job. And so uh, I have a foundation, a background that people are aware of, I can be verified. And so uh, because of where I'm coming from, integrity, capacity, and competence that I have displayed, I am very sure that I'm going to come victorious in that election. If you see the way I campaign, I go to the communities. Organic supporters are the ones I'm looking for. Yesterday I was, I was uh, driving past a fellow contestant and I saw over a hundred vehicles, buses, um, all kinds of vehicles carrying people. So they carry people to go and fill up their uh, campaign venues. I'm not after that, I don't do that. I organize town hall meetings in communities to discuss the issues of lack of amenities in the state, the bad roads in the state, the no jobs for young people, the um, dilapidated nature of our educational facilities, the moribund state-owned companies, and of course the darkness in Bayelsa. Those are the issues that will resonate around the voters, and, and they are the ones I am speaking to. I'm talking to young people who re should realize that it is their time to take leadership and they too should be given an opportunity to express themselves in the political space. And so far so good, uh, we are moving. We don't have the kind of money they have, but I'm not afraid of them because uh, all of them are, are using monies from government posts, stolen monies. None of them went to carry block in any sites to bring money. So me, I'm doing it the best way I can. And the people are seeing, they are beginning to resonate with the message that I carry. And at the end of the okay. day, I will come out victorious in this election. But then, the question I am asking, I haven't seen the, I haven't heard the answer. The question I'm asking is, what are the top three, top five things that you're promising? Yes, you are addressing the issues. You have a clear understanding with the oh, things okay, you've okay. just said. You want said. me to go back to my agenda? I, uh, no, not. I'm not asking you to read okay, out okay, your sorry, sorry. manifesto. I'm saying, what are the top three, five promises oh, oh. that you're giving to them that you reckon yeah, will yeah, win yeah. you Let the election? I have a four-point agenda. Yeah. Let's not four-point agenda. I've been, you know, I've been here several times, and so I felt that we have gone through all that. People, education, agriculture, and power. I'm talking about the people, the well-being of the people. No government will succeed without the people's support. So we'll be looking at healthcare, we're looking at dealing with floods, we're looking at dealing with security, education in the state, the kind of uh, educational practices we have here are obsolete. I want to upgrade the educational facilities, employ teachers, train them, and then ensure that their welfare is next to none. I'm going to invest in agriculture. By yes, sir, we produce sugar cane in abundance. I want to produce sugar when I become governor of the state. We have a 60,000 ton cassava processing facility in Bayesa that is dead. I want to revive it so that through agriculture, I can create jobs okay. and wealth for our state. I okay. want to provide power. Bayesa has almost uh, three abandoned okay. power plants. And there is a 243 megawatts Roxane power plant in Bayesa. I want to forge those partnerships with mm -hmm. those uh, private individuals that own those power plants that are not being used so that we can generate power okay. to uh, uh, jumpstart our economy. Okay. So I have okay. a four-point agenda, the people agenda, okay. and okay. I think that with this agenda is what I'm explaining to Bayesans, okay. and they are understanding me. They, they, they will resonate okay. with the issues, and I will come out so, victorious in the election. Well, thanks. Let's go straight to it now. You say people know your antecedents. We know your antecedents. A lot of people still claim in Bayelsa that you are part of the elite class. And how they prove it? You served as a special advisor at some point in the NDDC. And we all know what has befallen NDDC with all the corruption. Would you want to speak about you know, some of that and your past? And secondly, I'll ask you a question. Like I asked you last time, hope you have done your homework now. You say you want to do education. How many schools are in Bayelsa? And how many healthcare centers are there? Okay. Um, okay. Um, uh, Rufai. Yes. If I didn't go and participate in election, the first in the government, the first thing that everybody will be talking about is that he doesn't have experience. Now, nah, I have participated. They are not saying that I am part of the block. The issue is that go and check the positions that I held 
How did I dispense the authority? That is what is important. In NDDC, I was special assistant to, an, to the uh, interim administrator. And for me, I didn't get myself involved. I wasn't in the authority or in the position to dispense resources. I had my job description cut out for me. And I dealt with it according to my job description. And that's why sometimes when I see people celebrating governors, it makes me laugh because what is their job description? I had my description. And if I failed, point out that when you were in social office, you were supposed to do X, Y, Z, and you didn't do it. There were 105 health centers in Bayelsa. Um, Rufai, I keep, when, anytime when you, when you talk about these numbers, sometimes I, I wonder, because what are we looking for? Functional, functional. Yeah, but Udans, facilities. Udans, I've been Udans, going to communities. Udans, you need it now. I'm happy you've done your homework. I said there are one hundred five health. Be, because you need the yes. you need the numbers eh, to be able to plan in the first place. So how many schools are there in the whole of Bayelsa? Yes, State? I know. So how many? You said one hundred five healthcare centers. Look, how many schools are there in Bayelsa State now? Let's start for them so that we know the numbers we are planning with. Because I want your state to do well, eh? Just like anybody wants Bayelsa to do Look, well. Look, we have about three hundred schools. We have about 300 schools in Bayelsa State. Very good. Second question is, how many, of, how many of the, them are in good the, conditions? The how many of them are in good conditions? Um, Rufai, when you mean good condition, you'd have expected me to leave my campaign and start going around the entire state looking for the schools. Every of the communities that I go, I inspect the schools and see the conditions they are. Yes, there may be students in the schools. Some of them don't have toilets. Some of them don't have the right... Um, um, desk and the learning environment but i have not gone and said okay i'm going to be going to be looking for so, so every o, o, community o, 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 to o show which school is functional you see, let me tell no, you something i don't think that that is leadership is accountability by now if you want to be the governor of bielsa state you must at least have an audit of what is working or not as we speak that's just the pure way of our leadership work. Uh, and that's why i deliberately uh, ask you these questions because we expect uh, more from you because you're a young person and we feel the young people are the future of this country so how many of those schools are in good conditions yes, uh, or Rufai, not like, can I what is your to audit that? on them yes can i respond to that Rufai? go ahead oh, thanks yeah you see Rufai, i have a peripheral knowledge of what happens in the state i can't be dealing with everything to the letter at this point because there are going to be people are, that are, are responsible for those things, to do those things. Are you ready to lead? All my, all my responsibility is to supervise. Uh, Udem, Rufai, are you ready to lead? My responsibility is to supervise. Udem? The leader's responsibility is to supervise. All right. <laughs> okay. Udem, are you ready to lead? <laughs> I yes. think, I, 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 I do believe, well, yes, no, I Rufai, hear you. I don't you. understand when you say whether I'm ready to Udem's. lead. I've led to this point. I've led to this point. You're asking whether I'm ready to Udem's. lead. Udengs. Okay. All right. Let me, let's come, let's come yes. to it. I hear you when you say that a leader, a leader's role is to supervise. However, in order to supervise, you must know the issues. You must understand the issues because if you don't know what is plaguing the state, how can you make promises or draft a plan to address those issues? I guess that's where the question, I believe that's where the question is coming from. And the last time we were here, we had asked, Rufai had asked the questions around the schools, the details, and I think it's quite important. So for instance, we want to assume that if you're looking, I mean, you said P, um, your P, people, education, agriculture, and power. Yes, the people agenda. If you're going to look at power, you would understand the challenges or the flooding, which are the areas most prone to flooding. And then how do you hope to stem the impact of flooding in those areas? If you're looking at the people, what is the population of the young okay. people? No, I'm just breaking it down for you. What is the population of the young people in Bayelsa? You have reading on the support and perhaps you know, influence that you have over the young people in, in, in Bayelsa State, being a youth yourself. How do you hope to change the prospects of young yeah. people in Bayelsa State? What are their key challenges? This is what we mean by understanding the issues, very detailed, so that you're able to better respond, not just providing a solution, without understanding that this is actually what they need. So that's where it's, you know, it's coming. So I'd like you to share with us some of the critical challenges and what you believe are the best ways to tackle these challenges under your PIP agenda. Okay, first of all, we have about 40% of our young, uh, of our population as young people. And the greatest problems that we have here 
are the issue of education. Our young people, a lot of them are dropping out of schools, probably because the school environment is not conducive enough and the style of education in our state. We are, our educational uh, method is obsolete. You need to bring in, in information technology into our educational space so that people begin to be interested. The kind of school buildings that we have are already obsolete. So people, young children do not see anything that interests them in an educational environment. We need to change the architecture of the kind of schools that we have in Bayesa. We look at joblessness. There are a lot of young people who have graduated from schools and there are no jobs. And it is simple. Bayesa have over 11 companies that are dead under the current administration. The Bayesa, the Bayesa dredging company is dead. The Bayesa construction company, the Bayesa farm, the Bayasa Drug Distribution Company, the Bayasa Plastic, the Bayasa Paint Manufacturing Company, the Bayasa Fisheries, 1,500 ponds in uh, Igbogene, dead. The 60,000 ton cassava processing facility in Ebedebiri is dead. How do you now create jobs if the institutions that should engage the young people are not functional? You look at, you talk about the flood. Bayasa have two parts. We have the salt water part of Bayasa and of course the fresh water. The flood is more prone most prone in the freshwater areas. And so every community that is within the freshwater is suffering the flood. You cannot rate to say this area is more than the other. But if you go to the freshwater areas, we have more flood prone communities. What I have been looking at is to dike the communities. Most of it, we have so much sand that have silted the entire waterways. In the, in the, in the 70s, when Chief Mefodo Kilo was governor in Bayesa, what they did was to dredge the waterways. Then he was Old River State Governor. He did the silting of the waterways. If you come to my village, part of that sand that came out as a result of the desilting is what they used to create higher grounds. And so if you go to some communities in Bayasa, you see those higher grounds as a result of desilting. What we will do is to revive the Bayasa dredging company, which is moribund at the moment, and use that company to begin to dredge most of our communities and some of them, if you go to the communities, the water actually comes from behind the, the town. So if you draw an, if you dredge an arc around the community, say 50 or 100 meters, and you put canals by the end of those, those sand fields, you would have solved the water that comes from behind. Then what you do is that you dike the front of the community, remove some of those buildings that are there, dredge the same sand in a way of desilting the waterway. Once the channel is deep enough, to carry the volume of water, you would have been able to resolve the flood issues. For the issue of agriculture, I talked about building food processing and storage facility in our cargo airport. We have a cargo airport that is not functional. And if you travel abroad today, you find out that Nigerian food now is in high demand. Foreigners are eating Nigerian food, and that's why restaurants are springing up every day in London. By 12 o'clock, you can't even find plantain in Peckham Market. Bayasa has abundance of plantain, crayfish, bananas. These foods can be made export materials if only we can build the food processing facility, invest our money in the agro-allied sector, and we make a lot of money for the state. The issue of power. The last administration, when uh, uh, President Gulok Jonathan was governor, he bought a, a turbine. That turbine was kept in a table where we have gas. Unfortunately, when he left, it was abandoned. So some people went and stole it. The turbine, as I speak, is sitting in front of Banquet Hall in Bayesa. When uh, Governor Dixon was, uh, Governor Silva was, govern was governor, he bought a new turbine in Bayesa. If you go to the Meringi plant, the facility is there. Roxin Engineering has two forty-three megawatts power plant in Bayesa. Those are some of the partnerships that we intend to forge Re, uh, revive the existing ones, and then we'll begin to produce power in the okay. state. I have looked at the problems in the state. When you say I don't have a grasp of it, I have a, a, a whole grasp of the issues that affect my people because I've been involved. I know them. But when you say I should begin to give you detail by detail on each of the, of the sectors, of course I have details on most of it. Okay, but that's, <laughs> that's not supposed to be okay. my responsibility at this point. Okay, when I get to the leadership position, People will be responsible to thank, look at thank these you issues so much, and begin to take them critically. Well, I really appreciate you for your time. Thank you so much. That's about all we can take. I wish you a lot of luck.